Congratulations, you have now completed all 26 points on the SEO checklist. What I thought I'd do in this lecture is actually share student questions that I've received from my other SEO courses. Now, the purpose of doing this is really to reinforce what you've already learned here and to really share real student questions that I've received. Personally, I find the Q&A part of presentations or lectures that I go to uh, the most interesting because you really see real life questions that people have and that really helps to reinforce what you've already learned. So we're not covering a lot of new ground here, but I think by hearing these questions and the answers, you'll probably answer questions you have yourself. And also this can really help you understand the information better by seeing the real questions that people have. So let us get straight into it. Starting off with a question from Lionel here. He says, really, why is my, my competitor number one? Now this often comes up. He has checked uh, online. He sees that if he types in dog seller, they come up as number one. He's made the test and sometimes the keyword dog seller doesn't even appear in the page. Could it be because of backlinks? Well, for the first thing that you should make sure is when you are checking your rankings uh, or seeing who's appearing number one, you don't want to do it when you're signed into your Google profile because Google will uh, change your search results based on your previous history. So if I look for, uh, if I have visited puppyfind.com a lot of different times in the past, I type in dog seller, Google is going to bring that up as a search result because I've gone to it previously before. You really want to be checking here using Google Chrome incognito when you're not logged into your browser if you want to see the search results. Even better than that, if you want to get a more accurate view, you could use a tool like Ahrefs to really analyze the web page even more to see the backlink profiles, etc. So that is really the steps that you should take. Use that incognito web, uh, window to make sure your search results are not being personalized. And then also use the Ahrefs tool to understand better uh, you know, what the, the links to the profile, the keywords that they're ranking for, etc. Now moving on to the second question, what could be the best SEO for the gaming niche? Now this is a question that I often get asked. Okay, you've told us some examples, but that doesn't apply to my business. I think a lot of the time it does really apply. It's always the same. Uh, strategy. You want to find the keywords, optimize the pages around those keywords and build the links. It's really the same three steps for every website. If you are in any doubt that that does not apply to your particular niche, you should just go back to this step. Assess your competitors. See what is working for them. How were they getting traffic and rankings and backlinks to their site? Listed at a whole load of tools here that you can really find that out for. So if any doubt, go back and assess your competitors. So here is a question around, about really updating your title tag and meta description. And what Brian is saying here is, I already updated my tagline and also the meta description. Does it take time to update? Yes, it won't immediately appear in Google once you've changed it. Remember that Google might only come back to your site every couple of days to see if anything's changed. So you can expect those updates to come through in maybe three or four days a week at maximum. Here's a question about backlinks. What is the maximum backlinks per month? Do we remove the older backlinks when we add the new ones? No, so there really is no maximum. The more backlinks that people are pointing to your content, to, to showing you that you're an authority around that website, the better. You, you don't remove backlinks because remember those backlinks are coming from other people's websites. Uh, sometimes they do get lost, but yes, you do want to be building links on a continual basis. It's not something you do once. You want to keep be creating that content, building up your authority even doing that manual outreach uh, to website owners and asking them for links back to your site, making them aware of your content using the tools uh, that we saw here, like mention.net and buzzsumo to find those non-existing non-linked content. So here we go, Etsy shop SEO. So Etsy is a really platform to 
uh, sell products online, kind of like a smaller version of eBay uh, or Amazon. And she's saying, what can I do to make my site more visible on Google? Well, it's the same as steps once again. Also, I would recommend that you look at the uh, SEO specific instructions for your platform. So example here, I, I was just pointing her back to Etsy because they have instructions on say where you update your title tag description, all that stuff. These steps are always the same. The on page optimiz um, optimization stuff in particular, it just might differ slightly the interface where you're putting all that stuff in. And so if that's the case, if you're using a platform like that, uh, just go ahead and look for the instructions and you're going to find exact instructions relevant to your particular platform. Another one that often comes up is I'm using a website builder, Wix, etc. Um, do the same thing. Look for the support sections for your platform and uh, to really see where you update the things, what, what's the exact places on the interface, etc. Here is a question from Amira about keywords. She says, I want to be sure that I understand right. I should choose the keywords with low search volume regardless of the monthly uh, searches. So this part is definitely right. You should choose those keywords with lower search volume. They were going to be, they will be less competitive. They'll be easier to rank for. If you go for those long tail keywords and what you can do is take that portfolio approach, rank for multiple keywords. So your total volume of traffic will be significant. Now, this is the part that you'd really um, just want to point out, not regardless of monthly search traffic, you definitely want to make sure there is some search traffic. If there's no figures in the search volume, it means that there's less than 10 searches a month, probably not going to be worth your time. To show you an example that I've typed in marketing strategies for Etsy, and you can see in the keyword planner here that it's just showing a dash. That means that there are less than 10 searches a month. So that that exact keyword phrase is not something you might want to rank for. So to recap there, uh, you do want to choose those less competitive, lower search volume, longer tail keywords, but do make sure that there is some search volume. You definitely want to don't be seeing those those dashes there. Here's a question from Graham. This is quite an interesting one. He says he has a news website and he's covering and trying to write articles about topics that necessary that don't necessarily have a historic search vol or search uh, volume. So something maybe like the Chewbacca mom that was like a big viral hit this year. Nobody would have been searching for that before. And so how does he really find out what is something popular to write about? What I said is you can use a tool like uh, BuzzSumo. We talked about this before. You could come in here, you could type in whatever the kind of viral news topic is. And you'll be able to see the uh, the shares that this, you know, articles with this topic in it got. So you can see all the different ones here. And also you could use Twitter search. You just come into twitter.com forward slash search. You can type in the keyword. You can see what's really popular, what is getting a lot of tweets and reshares, etc. And that is a way that you can gauge the interest and the popularity of a keyword, even if it's something that people haven't historically searched for. So that is, uh, I think, just an interesting question. Sometimes you do want to cover topics that don't have historic search volume. And that's the, really the way that you go about doing it. Here is a question from Anthony. And really, he's trying to understand the difference between uh, appearing on the first page of Google when you pay for it, and when you don't pay for it. So the paid advertisements on the Google search results appear right at the top here, you can see it says ad ad ad, it's down the side as well. When we are doing SEO, we are not trying to advertise here, we're trying to naturally get to the top of the search results without paying. So we did look in the Google Keyword Planner tool. And even when we look at the, uh, let's just say, uh, when we looked at our Chrome extension tool, we're looking at the cost per click. And the reason that we're looking at the cost per click 
uh, the cost to really advertise and get to the top of the search results is that it's an indication of how valuable the keyword is. If somebody is paying $7.01 to advertise for this keyword, then um, it's gonna be a valuable keyword. It's just an indication of how valuable the keyword is. Something like, what is marketing? You can see that it has almost no value for the business because people are way up at the top of that awareness fu funnel and nobody wants to advertise around that because uh, you know they're not looking for a course or a checklist or something valuable like that. So I think it's a good point just to bring up what we are really trying to do is naturally get to the top of the search results here. You can see these are not paid advertisements. The reason that we did do look at this information about cost per click is really just more to understand the value of the keyword. We can use this as a guide to understand the value of a keyword. Here's a question from Maud that relates to link building. Another way that people describe link building is off-page optimization. So this is just a question really answering you know, a jargon that's used in SEO. Off-page optimization is really the same as link building. It's really building up that authority outside of your website, getting people to point back to you. So uh, the jargon can often confuse people. Off-page optimization is the same as link building. It's just optimizing your website off your web page and really getting people to point back to you and uh, indicate you as an authority to Google around that keyword. So here's a question from a BPLAB about backlinking. He's just not quite understanding. Uh, what it is. So he says, who is the one who creates these links? These are other website owners who have websites who link back to your website. Uh, how do you create them naturally? You have to create content that's really worth talking about, that's worth linking and sharing to. And why would somebody link to you? Well, it's really they want to tell their audience about your product or service. And so they include a link to direct their audience there. And we saw a couple of examples of that in uh, the course. Here's a question from Jennifer it relates to keyword research. And she's asking, does the Google Keyword Planner tool categorize keywords into head, body and long tail keywords? So let's answer this qu for question first. No, inside the Google Keyword Planner tool, they don't differentiate between head body and long tail keywords. That's a chart we discussed. That's just a way to think about different types of keywords and uh, break them down. So the head one is a one word keyword. The body is a two word keyword phrase and the tail, the long tail of that graph is three or more keywords. That is not equivalent to the competition listed in Google, meaning low, medium, high. So here inside the Google Keyword Planner, you can see competition low, uh, you can see medium and there'll be some high one there. What this competition refers to is really the competition between advertisers to pay for this term. So essentially you can just ignore that completely. Uh, it really just shows if there's low competition, it means there isn't a lot of advertisers advertising for this particular phrase. Um, and you'll likely see that these, these phrases that have more competition have a higher cost per click. So that's what it is. They're not, those two things are not related. The Google Keyword Planner does not show the head, body and long tail keywords. That's just a way to really think about the types of keywords that you should be going after. And we really said we should focus on the body and long tail keywords because these are less competitive. So here's another question about the Google Keyword Planner tool. Uh, he's wondering what suggested bid means. Um, what is the meaning of suggested bid? I don't understand what we have to pay for. So this is similar again. Remember that we're using the Google Keyword Planner tool. It's part of Google AdWords. Google AdWords is the advertising platform of Google. So they have information here that's relevant for advertisers. We are not advertising. We are just using this information as a guide. The suggested bid can give us a guide to really how valuable the keyword is because we can see how much advertisers are willing to spend on it. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap it up here for the first part of this student Q&A session. That was really designed to help reinforce all of the points and actions that you've taken here. I've got, I'm gonna do one more 
in the next lecture uh, some more challenging questions. So I'll see you there once again.